So if you're a regular to the channel, you will know that I'm a big fan of short course trucks. However, I also quite like the look of the stadium trucks, which were run at last year's MKGP. Um, I am gutted that I missed out, so I have bought myself the Storm ST2 from Schumacher, and I'm really happy with how it's turned out. But um, what I thought I'd do is do a quick build video of the Storm ST. So let's see how it went. As always, the uh, Schumacher manuals are really easy to follow. Um, now, if we just have a little flick through these first couple of pages, the reason I'm holding off on my shock build is I don't have my drill set here. Um, so I'm gonna need to get the drill set off of Mark. So what I'll do is I'll get the drill set and I'm gonna do all the shocks properly. Um, when I was at junction 16, first outing for the LD3, I had a bit of a shock building masterclass from uh, Trish over at Schumacher, who taught me how he sort of does shocks for the team drivers when he is helping out and uh, setting up their cars. So um, I will pass on those tips. Maybe that'll be a separate video. Um, so yeah, I've got those steps to do. Then the next step is the diff, this is quite straightforward, um, and I will probably build that again a little bit later. What I don't want to be doing, it's quite late at the moment, as I get started with this build, I don't want to be getting all the oils and bits and bobs out. So I'm actually going to start here, step 10. Okay, when it comes to measuring out these, it gives you all the dimensions in the instructions. So this needs to be at 47.9. Now, if you want it to be perfect though, you need to get yourself a set of these. So obviously I'm aiming for 47.9 um, and I have got my calipers here, which are giving me a reading currently of 47.89. So that is pretty much as close as I'm gonna get. Okay, so this is now completed. Um, took me a little while to find it, but it is worth noting, this part here um, is not in the step 13 bag. That is in the S2 parts bag. So you'll find it in this bag here. So it's S2 parts. Okay, so next up, it is time to fit the servo. And I've gone with a Power HD servo. And you know what? I'm just loving the uh, precision of this design. Look how close it runs to the chassis. It all fits perfectly. So when you put the servo in, it is important you try to get the servo as high as possible. As for the roll bars, again, um, these are really simple to fit. And... Um, Time to move on to the front shock towers. Um, again, super simple to put together um, with regard setting where you want the shocks. I know that I like my shocks a little bit lower down, so I like to lay down my shocks a little bit more so you can start making changes to your car setup at this stage. Um, I think if I was to build another Schumacher car, I'm going to have to invest in a power driver because my wrists, by the time I finish this build, are starting to fatigue on me, especially using just a normal um, hex driver. So again, here we've got um, the body posts for the truck body, um, which we attach to. The other part that we've already built and then it's not long before we can get onto the front arms and uh, start putting it all together. If 
Okay, so at this stage it can be quite fiddly to get the two spacers, here's the other one, uh, in between these bits. So the way I've worked out to do it without everything falling out is I place one screw in the top, like so, put both the caps in, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to part screw um, this part in there. So that is step 20 complete. On to step 21, so that is another bag um, of parts. So in this bag, you've got steps 21, 22, 23, all the way through to step 30. So let's get started on the next section. Okay, chipping away, shocks on, anti-roll installed, front end is on the car, servo fitted. It's the front end basically now is done. Um, looking at this car, it is extremely similar to um, the LD3. Moving on to the rear of the car and it's time to start work on the gearbox. Uh, put a little bit of grease on there. Again, super simple to put together. Okay, so on to steps 31 through to 40. And at the moment, the car or truck is uh, is starting to take shape. So front end is complete. Um, so we're going to start work on the rear of the car. And then I believe it finishes off by putting in sort of where the battery goes. And uh, we're getting there slowly. So moving on to the installation of the diff. Now it's important that you get the right spaces for this because you can adjust the, the height of um, the rear diff. I've gone with the setup that it suggests in the manual. Again, lots of grease on there so that I've got it all lubed up, ready to go. So when you place the uh, top onto the uh, diff, you've got to make sure that it all moves nice and smoothly. Um, and then it is on to the slipper clutch. Again, this was quite straightforward to put together initially. Moving on to the back of the car, when you're building these, it's important to recognize that one side is flat, the other side has got um, a lump that comes out. Um, and then you've got different options for the height by putting the blocks in. And again, I'm sticking with what it says in the manual. So I've gone with the A blocks and uh, made up the pairs, ready to install on the rear arms. Again, Fitting these uh, spacers is actually quite straightforward because what you do is you simply push them into place rather than having to try and um, fit them on. As you feed the uh, rod through, you can literally just pop them straight in afterwards, which is really simple and uh, make the job a lot easier. It's important not to over tighten this because you can over tighten it, it makes the uh, upright stick a little bit. Here's another little trick for when you're trying to get the uh, rod in. I use the little rubber band to hold it in place and then give it a little gentle tap as you push it through and the rubber band just falls in over the top. 
Then we have these blocks, which is about setting the rear toe. Again, sticking with the manual setup, suggests you run on um, three, and also you need to run one of these spacers as you install uh, the rear arms onto the car. They went on pretty simple, and now the car is really starting to take shape. Okay, for the time being, I have got um, an old motor, an ESC that I had lying around. But I think what I'm gonna do is put this in, um, but at a later date, I want to upgrade to something similar to what I have over here. Now this is my wheel speed car, which is running Orca motor, Orca ESC. So eventually I'm looking to make the transition over to Orca in uh, this car. I really get on with the products. Um, I've had no issues with this as yet. So um, I think if I did go down that route, it would look really tidy, really nice. So so I've put the battery mounts in. Um, the battery's gonna actually be positioned. It recommends four. I know from the LD3, I, I preferred the, the handling of the car when I shifted the battery plate forward. So I've gone into the second hole there. Um, and then what I've done is I've put down the foam, which can then keep the uh, balance cable nicely hidden down underneath this groove. So my batteries can sit in there. Um, still need to solder in the wires and finish it all off. But the next job is to fit this, which is the first upgrade of the car, which is the brass radio plate. Again, 30 grams, you can see in the bottom corner there, that is to keep the weight forward in the truck. Okay, so I've put the brass plate in. I've stuck down the ESC and now I'm adjusting the cable length so I've not got loads of wires. So um, I've actually chopped these down and then I'm going to use my crimping set to put on some a new connector. To give you an idea of how much I've chopped off, I've taken away quite a bit of wire off of this one. Um, Hopefully it will look a little bit nicer once it's all done. So just finishing touches now and it is Sharpie time. Just colouring in the lead just to make it all look nice and black. So next little job to do is spray the shell. So mask out your windows, any sort of designs that you want. Um, I really wanted to have um, plenty of white on this car so I could use our white and black stickers because I thought that would create some nice contrast. But I didn't want it to be too boring with just a simple fade. I'm really pleased with how it's turned out. Uh, the spoiler went on nice and simply. Um, the overall look of the, the truck I think is absolutely outstanding. Absolutely love it. Um, so, next little job is the wheels. As for the wheels, we opted for hard inserts in the first instance. So again, when you get these, you could get soft or medium inserts. I opted for the hards. I believe the front tires are called the staggers and then the rear tires have gone with the mini spikes, um, both on the yellow compound. Uh, these are the tyres that they recommend when you buy the truck. Um, again, depending on where I run it, what sort of conditions I run it on, might depend on sort of what tyre setup I should have. So what a fantastic piece of kit this is. Um, in terms of getting this out on the track, I am currently waiting on an order for pinions because of the size of the wheels and the gearing. Um, I didn't actually have the right pinion for this, so I'm just waiting for a new pinion to arrive. I'm going to get that on the motor and hopefully get it down to one of my local clubs and test it out. 
Then once I've tested it out, I'll have a little trawl across the internet, ask for some advice and tips from people in the know, get this car set up as good as I can, and then hopefully um, I'll be able to run this at the Charged RC event, which is running in Blackpool. Um, as far as I'm aware, there's still plenty of spaces available. So if you've got one of these and you're desperate for somewhere to race it, the uh, Charged event in Blackpool could be the place. Um, they've got the trucks running, they've got two wheel drive buggies, four wheel drive buggies, uh, they've got a vintage class, but they're always also running GT12 and a couple of other on-road classes, and they've also got the oval tracks as well. So um, really looking forward to that event, really looking forward to getting this thing out and about. So uh, if you'd like to see my progress with the Storm 2, the Storm ST2, sorry, um, like, subscribe, hit the old ding dong bell, and I'll see you again soon.